doing? Okay, welcome to Omni Bros Live, the big experiment. It's yeah. still, it still says private on my thing, though. I we're think that's live. wrong. It's because we're live. We're, we're live. getting messages already yeah. on the chat. I think it's because this room is private, like no pants party private. For some reason, it didn't have a link to click before you got on tonight. Usually, there's a waiting room. I just got a notification on my phone. Okay, that must mean that's why it's private. Uh, okay, so next time I'll do public with a. I wonder what it's like in the. Can you change it to public? That's what he was trying to do earlier. I was going to go back and change it to pub. Whoa. What, what happened? What'd you do? <laughs> I went back and I clicked the link that I put in the in the um, in the uh, omnibus group, and it's it's all fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, where where does it take you? It it takes us. Wait a sec. Oh no 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 no. Okay no no no. It's okay. It's, it's okay. all right. Yeah, it's it's actually all right. Okay. All right. All right. Oh yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, uh, this is fun. This is easily one of my favorite episodes so far of the year. <laughs> <laughs> why do we always let Jess be like the guy in charge of new technology too? But it, like, that's what really is, is the best part. Hey, it's, he's our it's fearless working, leader. Though. It it's works. working. Yeah. It's more fun this way. It exactly. Is. It's all about like. You know, uh, necessity is the mother of invention, and when you don't give a fuck, things happen better. Right. And I found out how to get rid of the little powered by stream yard thing that's over Omar's head. Uh -huh. Yeah. You have to pay for it. Yeah, twenty dollars a month. Twenty yeah, that, um, American money? <laughs> Shit. Whatever. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Only $20? I'll take five of them. I I am tonight I am powered by Steam Yard. Where the hell is it? Yeah, I, <laughs> right there. This, this mirroring thing is so weird. Like, I know I'm, it is. Everything's so, backwards. Right. I'm so used to looking at the on my monitor and I'm like over here now it's like, oh what the hell? <laughs> oh, I love this. Oh, the Brady Bunch uh, format is perfect. Everybody loves the oh, Brady yeah. Bunch format, which leads me right into my introduction to yeah. InStockTrades.com. <laughs> I, I, I thought the Brady Bunch format oh, wait. was... You guys were pointing, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I, we're going to talk about... <laughs> I feel like those guys from Dragon Ball Z, the Ginyu Squad, where you gotta like kind of like <laughs> get squad. over the side. And then me and Geo does this, and then we farm into Geo Gabe or whatever. <laughs> fusion. Oh, there we go. Oh, now I got a beard and hair. <laughs> uh, com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add another 2% to that. Every uh, quarter, there's an Omnibros live code. Over $50 in an order gets you free shipping in the United States. Fabulous service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da-da. You should do the IST like promo in that kind of a cadence. In the Brady Bunch cadence? Yes. In stock trades, collected editions, up go. to 2% off your collected editions, over $50 in an order, gets you free shipping in the United States. There you go. That's perfect. That's a ringtone. <laughs> That's a ringtone right there, bro. That's also probably a copyright hit. <laughs> I thought that when you said the Brady Bunch format, I thought it meant that we all had to be rich white people and have like a stay at home wife and a maid. Oh. Because I was thinking about that earlier today. I don't know why, but I was thinking about Brady Bunch. I was like, why did they even have Alice where uh, the mom didn't work and she just stayed home? And it's not like she was watching kids because all the kids were like, you know, grown ups and had a band. So she just probably just stayed home and drank a lot of wine with Alice. <laughs> Uh, 
and then Mike got AIDS. Uh, okay. That was hey, actually true. That yeah. was actually true. Wow. Yeah. And what's that toy you're playing with, Uncanny Omar? Oh, I need to introduce everybody. Yep. You suck. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I, I do have a question. So is it this is the format of the show? There's no how do you guys do a, like a screen share like tonight when we're gonna talk about the That is a great question. I do have a screen share button. Does anybody else? Yeah, yeah. we do, so, but how do we go how do we go full screen? Uh well the person I'll that figure going that to, out. The person that's going I can go to... like that. Exactly. How'd you do that? What'd you push? I I pushed the Omni Dog button. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has control over that. How do you have an Omni Dog button? Because I'm <laughs> Omni Dog. <laughs> okay, so you're Ooh, the one that's in control of who goes full screen. Right. Yeah. Let me see what happens when I press you. Nothing. Nothing happens. Okay. Uh, Interesting. Let's see. Wait. No, I can remove people from screen. Oh, this is going to end. Screen sharing. Awesome. There you go. Can you guys see the screen share or what's up? Yeah. Let's or see. do you have to allow it, Jess? It looks like you have to allow it. I'm, it I'm not sure like, if I in, like in Jess being in control of everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's Omar yeah, wait. Here, I can remove you if you want from the stream. All right, you could, you could always you do on. that. <laughs> well, that's true, Omar, yeah. can, can you guys see my screen share? Is this happening? No. I think, Jess, nope. you have to allow it. It's like sitting in like the waiting room. Yeah. Sitting in the waiting room. Yeah, you know how you allowed each of us into the group or into this, this room? Uh yeah. Is there is it is it saying anything like somebody is waiting? Somebody's waiting. Is this the way that you all did it on Sunday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you all, put, you all put the guy that still can't figure out how to work the <laughs> clock on his VCR in charge. <laughs> he still has a VCR? <laughs> no. Internet. Yes, he does. He, he, puts in a, he, he tried to put in a, a 4K and adjust the tracking. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out the logic of how that Oh, happened. there. There. there can... Okay, so now I go here, and this mm -hmm. is previews, right? Yeah, yeah. I can okay. do you. Let's try Shut it up, Omar. I, I know how to do it. <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> I wasn't saying anything. I mean, I You're I saying everything. It, boom. Do you do you have a command uh four button? What was it? F4? Might be a, <laughs> F4 button. I don't have an F. <laughs> hey Omar, did you make an account or did you just log in with the, the No, I just account? I just guessed okay. account. I think when you have an actual account, you might get more options. I don't know because I haven't made an account yet. All right. Uh Geo looks like a guy that's ahead of the game. You made an account. Do you have more options? Nope. Well that's that then. Nope, that you didn't make an account, or nope, that you don't have any more options. I made the same account uh, that Jess has because oh, we so logged in at the account. same time. You're not logged in on your own account right now, correct? No, when I log into uh, the app, I log in as the channel too. I don't know why. It's weird. All right. So, what did everybody haul and read this week? You want to keep going with the show? <laughs> Hell yeah! We'll figure this out in the yeah. Offline. I already gave the. I already gave the. Um... Promo, so you did it in a Brady Bunch song. Next, do it Gilligan's <laughs> Island. Uh, yeah, who wants to go first? And I guess, Jess, you have to highlight the person, right? For them to go full screen. Uh, yes, okay. I can do that. So, or Geo, you can do that big screen and then like the three of us on the side. That's always cool. Yeah, okay, yeah. And... Who do we want to go first? I'll save everybody the trouble. Um, I, I'm reading some manga, and I hauled uh, some books that have not arrived. I got the Grant Morrison Batman omnibus, and it was shipped all the way to Seattle for some reason. Uh, so it's taking uh, a little longer to get here. And I got the Hexed omnibus and the Batman Rebirth Deluxe Volume 4. Again, <laughs> none of that has arrived, so I apologize. So that's it. Okay. Word. All right. I kind of I haven't been on the show in a while, so I got a little bit of a haul and Go for a it. bunch of reads to kind of talk about. So let me just kind of get into that real quick. I'll make it fast because this is a bunch of stuff that you guys might have already picked up yourselves. And I, but if you have questions or whatnot, you know, let me know. Whatever. 
All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go with a bunch of X-Men stuff going on this week for a haul. Are we doing hauls or reads? Whatever. Whatever. Uh, Both. So one of my favorite runs of all time is Peter David's original X-Factor. It's not as good as the second run on X-Factor, but still super high-quality stuff. Uh, so I got the X-Factor Volume 7 Epic Collection. This stuff is great. I love... This is a, where... X Factor really started to become a major, major title. I think when it comes into the history of uh, X Men and the X Universe, where they kind of strayed away from it originally being just a return of the original five, and you got some awesome art in here by Larry Stroman. There's some Dale Keown action in here because you get some incredible Hulk issues, and of course, you get some Joe Casada in here as well. I'm trying to figure out how this camera works on this system now. But some great Joe Casada stuff in here. And you get the awesome uh, is that one in here? I'm not sure. But you get some good Jamie Madrock stuff in here. Lots of great, great X Factor stuff in here. I love this Sinister and Strife cover. Right there. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's good stuff there. Uh, also, I, if, you, if you follow us, Omni Bros Live on Instagram, you might have already saw me do an opening of this, but I got Gambit Complete Collection Volume 1 and that Volume 1 and Volume 2. So this is great stuff as well. I get, this is kind of a Fabian Nicieza uh, haul so far because he did some X-Factor work and he is the main scribe for Gambit with awesome, and I do mean incredibly awesome, uh, at least to me, artwork in here by the great Steve Scroke. Some cool stuff in here. Steve Scroke. That's how you, you don't say know, his name. Maybe I don't know if it's Scroke or Scrocy or, or, or whatever. I wouldn't um, know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> say it, Omar. I'm not going to play that game, but I do like his art. Yeah, he is the guy that did. Uh, I love him for many, many reasons, especially for this uh, Gambit run he did, but especially because he was the uh, storyboard artist for the Matrix films. Yep. So lots of good stuff. I really, this is early stuff for him. I mean, his you can see some of his artwork today on in comics a little bit, and it's slightly different. He has a series on right now uh, through Image Comics, and his art looks a little different. But this is the stuff that. I fell in love with was this stuff and his X Men stuff that he was doing back in this time. You always so, seen the channel that Joe Casada kind of artwork. A little bit, yeah. You can see some like the jagged lines that come down to the shading and, and the hair and things like that. So I can definitely see some Joe Casada in there for sure. Um, boom! More X Men fun stuff. Uh, Wedding of uh, Cyclops and Phoenix. Nice. I know most of the X-Men guys on the show, like Riley and Omar, already have this, but I'm definitely going through, and I want to start collecting as much of the cool 90s X-Men stuff as I can. So there's that. And speaking of cool 90s stuff, Heroes Are Born, Omnibus, motherfuckers. Yeah. Look at this <laughs> badass thing. This is great. I know everybody's going to talk crap about the art on the cover. But nobody knows what they're talking about. We're going to talk bad about that art. This stuff so, is great. I thought that was a brand new piece of art by Brett Booth. And I was corrected. It is not. It apparently was a promotional ad somewhere. I've just never seen it. Yeah. Um, no, I agree. I don't think I've seen it either. And but who cares? It's Brett Booth and it's really cool stuff. You even get like inside, you get double page spreads that you got to turn upside down to get some gutter loss. Not upside down, but long ways. Damn it, Geo! Did you just send that the Turbo Graphics Mini was live in the middle of this episode? Now I got to go <laughs> click on Amazon to try to buy this damn system that's going to sell out because forty year olds like myself are going to try to buy it. And there's some dope <laughs> Jim Lee, Fantastic Four. Look at that Namor splash. Look at that. That's that's fucking cool. You trust the uh, best dude sitting in chairs, man. That's right. So good stuff there. That um, book is thick. Yeah, I think it's a beast. I mean, it has like so much in it. You have. Does it have Age of Apocalypse in here? 
Not Age of no. Apocalypse, but um, Onslaught. Onslaught. No. Marvel no. Universe. No, it's a uh, Heroes Are Born one half. It's all the Heroes Are Born tie-in series, so this goes right after the uh, Onslaught on the boat. So it has. It's got that issue of Hulk that they crossed over in. Yeah, where uh, Doctor Strange discovers them, or, or realizes they're still alive, and finds out they're in a pocket dimension. But this is great stuff. Uh, I, I've always declared that this is a huge part of Marvel history and comics history in general. Not just the stories in here, really, but just kind of like the back end idea of these characters that were failing so hard. Some of their biggest names that we that are today, like the Avengers and Captain America and Iron Man, were just dying in the in the water. And they got outsourced back to some image creators like Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee. So super cool. Um, I love this. I, also, I promise to ignore. That's fine. <laughs> uh, what else here? All right. Uh, Batman Deluxe Volume 4. This is the, the book that takes place that has the wedding story in here. The big super controversy wedding story that really was a dividing rod within the comic book community and people still are a little butt sore over it and i'm talking to you luis um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's great uh so this is uh batman 45 through 57 and a story from dc nation is zero I showed this off on a Sunday show because somebody asked, but I did get the monstrous oversized hardcover. This thing is, I haven't read any of this. I mentioned this before. I bought this just because you guys wouldn't shut up about it. <laughs> it's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I'm about to say, I am uh, pretty happy about it because the artwork in here is absolutely gorgeous. There is some wonderful, wonderful, I, I flipped through, I haven't read any of it yet. But there's some just outrageous panel layouts. And everything has this really great kind of painterly looking color to it. Like this is just on the epic fantasy style of story. This is just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful stuff there. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, 90s X-Men and Steve Scroke, I did get the Cable and X-Force omnibus as, as well. Which a lot nice. of people find confusing because it's volume three of basically X Force and volume two was called Deadpool and X Force. Volume three is called Cable and X Force, but whatever, it's great. And uh, oh, look, everybody, white spine. Oh no, the spine is white and the other ones were black. What am I ever <laughs> going to do? Oh god, but yeah, great stuff there. Uh, at work, we had a uh. A big original comic book art dealer come into the shop and do like a really cool pop up uh, booth shop inside the shop, and uh, it's not comic book related, but this is really cool. He had a bunch of original Christmas card art. Ooh, who's this? I, nice. Uh, his name is Anthony uh, Snyder. Uh, mm. Anthony's original comic book art. Oh yeah, I know that guy. Oh, do you? Okay. I know of him. I don't know him personally, but I know I've seen his stuff. Yeah, and uh, so I, this is. I think I might have. I, something really resonated with me when I saw this uh, Christmas card art. I might have had this Christmas card in my house as a kid or, or something, but this is hand-painted original art used to make a, a Christmas card. I think it's beautiful. and mm -hmm. uh, It's one of those things I think I'll probably just frame and hang up in the house all year round. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Mm -hmm. to enjoy cool art. Nice. Uh, I think that's it for hauls. Are we going to just do back-to-back -back hauls and reads stuff as well? Should I just keep going? Uh, I'll just keep going uh, then. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so reading, I am about halfway, maybe more than halfway through the third absolute for Transmed. That's been my big readathon recently. Uh, that third absolute is it starts off very, very heavy, like emotionally heavy. There's some really messed up stuff and topics in uh, those first couple of issues, like. Uh, homeless runaway kids who are also street prostitutes and really just messed up society type stuff like that. Uh, so I had to take a little bit of a break and I kind of switched gears and read some, uh, I don't know, like some palate cleansing type of uh, comic books. 
So I went from prostitute children to extreme super violence in this Wolverine versus Blade uh, one shot. I know it's not an omnibus and we're not single issue bros or whatever, but I just needed <laughs> to check this out because I had a crazy ass artwork in this thing. It is, this is like the title says, it's Wolverine and Blade. And it is straight up, it's Wolverine in his uh, Uncanny X Force gray uniform again. And it is literally just Wolverine and Blade just unleashed. And they're just destroying zombies after zombies, just hordes and hordes of zombies. It's super violent. It kind of reminds me of that X Force run, uh, the Kyle Yo stuff, where it was just super bloody and gory. Mm -hmm. But the artwork in here is really cool. Digital. I'm not really a big fan of like this digital kind of artwork, but this is really, really tremendous. This is really done great. Um, story is all right. It's written by Mark Guggenheim, and I expect a little bit more from Mark Guggenheim. But the artwork just really was the uh, the showrunner here. It really, just kind of improved the story a lot, and it's kind of what I was kind of into when I when I first flipped through this. Um, so that's super cool. It's just a one shot. I mean, you can probably pick it up at a local comic book store uh, if they still have any left and check it out. It's a good fun read. Uh, but yeah, lots of cool blood and gore. Can't go wrong with that. Um, also, uh, Die. Anybody else picked up Die Volume 1? Anybody read this yet? Yeah, I uh, read I picked, it, and I, I already it sent it to Maddie. Okay, cool. So then I guess <laughs> I don't have to send it to Maddie. <laughs> he no. loved it. No, I, this is this is awesome. This is like, uh, I don't know if, how much you got into it, but it's basically like d and &D, uh slash Jumaji kind of story. That yeah, together. that's why I sent it to Maddie. I thought she'd dig it more than I did. I liked it, but I think she'd love it. Oh, yeah. she, she loves Jumanji. No, it, it has the same idea. Just these kids started a and d game. They literally got sucked into it, disappeared for a while, and came back. I think it was two years later, and they were all different. Like, one's missing an arm and weird, weird messed up stuff like that. Um, not all of them returned. One of the party members stayed in the like D and D world or whatever. I've got the name of the world in here. Uh, and they have to go back 30 years later. So they're all grown up and they have, you know, messed up childhoods and messed up adult lives now. And they have kids and divorces and, you know, just your normal, typical, uh, life, but they have to go back into this strange D and D world to save their friend and, beat the game essentially i'm not gonna get too, into too much detail into it because there's a lot of spoilers like about the game master and, and things like that but if you're a fan of like role playing like you know dice and pen and paper type stuff this is super cool i had art and it's really great as well uh this is the first six issues it's a complete story for the most part oh, i'm sorry this is the first five issues uh and it's a complete story for the most part but it's definitely makes me want to just keep reading. I can't wait for the next uh, trade to come out. And I borrowed this from the store, but when it comes in a hardcover, I'm definitely going to buy an oversized hardcover of, of this. And what's also great about this trade paperback is the extras in the back. And I don't mean like, you know, like the, you know, there's some David Mack original artwork stuff in here, but uh, the writer, uh, Karen Gillen, in the single issues of his books, always writes like these essays, and they usually do not get reprinted in the trades. Usually, that's I guess like a a bonus if you buy the single issues and you support the single issues, you get all these essays. Uh, but they put it in here, and the essays you definitely want to read them because there's a lot of information about how he came up with the idea and the world and the characters and what the what die means and what each die represents and and stuff like that so there's a lot of great just back matter information in here as well there's even a link in here uh where you can actually download a uh, role-playing version of this story so there's actually like a DD party game that you can actually download and play with your friends and stuff so that's really interesting and cool um This is another Omar suggestion that he got me caught up on. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. X and Rogan Gambit. So Rogan Gambit comes first, uh, written by Leah Williams, and then uh, Mr. and Mrs. X, Volume 1, which is 
the further adventures of Rogue. I think they're written by Kylie, Kelly Thompson. It is Kelly Thompson. I'm sorry. Jesus. Never mind. I don't blame you for having Leah Williams on the brain, but that's Kelly Thompson. Always on the brain. Always. As my <laughs> wife is standing in front. What is it? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> so basically, uh, Rogue and Gambit is a story of Rogue and Gambit uh, going to a, a couple's retreat on a fantasy paradise type island. And a bunch of crazy mutant uh, things start to happen, like enslavement and dealing. It's it's actually kind of like one of those like weird. It's all about therapy and, and you know uh, couples therapy and expressing your feelings and dealing with your emotions and each other's flaws and things like that. Uh, but it's also just mutant related as as well. And you get a bunch of like different versions of your favorites. Rogue and Gambit throughout the generations. And then you get the further adventures here in Mr. and Mrs. X where, uh, spoilers, they got married and their honeymoon turns into more mutant uh, shenanigans there in the middle of their honeymoon, of course. Um, I borrowed these both from the store. I borrowed, I, I, I liked it so much, I accidentally borrowed both co- two copies of volume one of Mr. and Mrs. X. <laughs> so I'm definitely going to take these back to uh, to the store, put those back on the shelf. And that's everything, everybody. Thanks for uh, thanks for visiting what Gabe read and what shit he bought. And I'll awesome. be in San Diego this week, leaving tomorrow morning. You excited? So, uh, yes. It's always a good time, right? It's it's work, and at the same time a vacation. But yeah, of it's course. Also work, so it's like this odd, you know, uh, mixture of all day. I got to stand at the booth at San Diego Comic Con and and work, and then after work, it's party time, like hardcore party time. Not away, not a- away from the family and kids for a week too. <laughs> not all day, my friend. Not when you need to take a break to go get Jess's Batman stuff and me, my dumbass <laughs> pins. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, don't forget my stuff. pins. Oh, uh, dude, I, I, if I make it to that pin, uh, to the Marvel's uh, uh, activation, whatever you want to call their booth, I don't, I'm getting you know. motherfucking pins and I'm getting me some motherfucking pins. So I'm looking forward to that. Awesome. And with Jess, all I have to do is literally just check in and say, yes, this is me. Here's my badge. Here's my confirmation number. You can now mail me that Batman thing so I can mail it out to Jess later. Oh, it's that's cool. Odd. <laughs> no, it's the oddest thing. It's odd, but I like it because I don't have to take that shit home with me. You yeah. Know, like, you know, pack it up or anything like that. So mm-hmm. uh, speaking of packing up, I'm basically all packed. My major stuff is packed. I already threw it on the truck for work. Uh, it's on the semi truck now heading down to San Diego. That's all my luggage. So I don't have to pay for a check-on bag um, and stuff like that, then so that'd be fun. So again, I mentioned it yesterday. If you're at San Diego Comic-Con, you see me, say hey, come visit, say what's up. I'm very personable and humble, apparently. But, you know, don't be afraid to come by and say hey if you're a fan of the show. So, it's all about connecting with people. And let's go get a beer, because I might be off my diet, and I'm going to just get wrecked this whole weekend. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's the reason you diet, my friend, so you can uh, so you can drink your weight, dude. I, I've been yeah, it's less weight to drink too, but I've been dieting <laughs> extra hard to. Oh, you're gonna get drunk off of one beer. It. You're gonna be such a lightweight, <laughs> dude. I've, I've always been a lightweight, man. Yeah, I'm a cheap date, bro. Like one or two drinks, and I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be a lot of that down there. There's a lot of there's gonna be a lot of partying. I talked about it yesterday, but that's one of the cool things about San Diego. It, it, it's a it's a party town. On, after that convention lets out. So, yeah, so come see me. I'll be at the Torpedo booth, booth 1000, where we'll have that 9.4 Amazing Fantasy 15 and all kinds of other, like, out of control, uh, high end back issues as well. So, uh, Gabe, there's a question next? for you on the chat. Oh, hey, Jess, real quick. Uh, speaking of questions in the chat, I saw, I was looking up some information about Yardbird, not Yardbird, that's, 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 That's big. Idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that you can actually like click. Is there a way you could click on a comment and it pops up on screen? Uh, I can try. Because I think that'd be cool if we answer questions. We can actually. There you go. Look at that. See? Yeah, there you go. Now we can actually like. Now you can't. Now you but can't now you can't see, see anybody. <laughs> well, I don't know. We can maybe. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Maybe we could do a, a full screen for whoever's answering the question. I don't know. 
But this okay. is cool. You can actually put the question on screen. That's there. Cool. Oh, there you go. Gabe, CGC slash pressing question. Oh, shit. Uh, how much can pressing improve the grade <laughs> of a comic? Are there telltale signs that pressing could have an impact when buying a raw comic? All right. Good question. Um, it's kind of a lot to unpack. But I'll mention it like this. Pressing can improve it depends it's it's going to be a sliding scale and i hope this all makes sense if not feel free to you know send me more questions uh the grade of a comic based on its condition can possibly be improved with pressing and for those of you who don't know what pressing means it literally is they take the comic book they put it into basically a t-shirt press with a little bit of moisture not like they don't soak it in water but it's just like moisture during the air and a hot condensed pressure for depends on on the book and the type of pressing that needs to be done on it for a few days and it'll help smooth out certain imperfections on those books and those type of imperfections as you're asking are the telltale signs that pressing could have an impact is if you see a book on the spine or on the cover itself with like it's called spine ticks where we'll see like little indentations up and down the spine I don't have like a, a I have that. I don't, know, I don't know if any of these are good examples or anything like that. I don't think any of these have spine ticks or anything like that. But anyways, so I made spine ticks on this book. Let's see if this works. I don't care. Um, you kind of see here how there's like this indentation and this kind of like light line here. As long as it doesn't break color, like this one here breaks color. That's I, I fucked that up, but whatever. But these ones here that don't quite break color is just like a light indentation. That's what the pressing takes out. And these indentations are all serious knocks against their condition. Um, if this was a 9.8 book now, this is oh, – I wrecked, I wrecked it pretty good. Um, this is like an 8.0 now. This is pretty jacked. The press is not going to do much to help this anymore. But if it, just, if it was just these slight ones here that don't break color – the pressing will flatten that out and improve the grade. I personally have had books go from uh, 8.0 to 9.8. Um, I've seen it all just based on what is already on there that is color breaking and can't be pressed out and what is on there that can be pressed out, like those spine takes and little slight indentations. So it can improve the condition of a book a lot. I think the biggest I've ever really seen is maybe like a 7.5 to like an 8.5, which doesn't sound like a lot, but depending on that book, that's thousands of dollars of, of, of improvement to the condition of that book. So I hope that answers your question. Polly P, and thanks for the question, bro. Yep. Okay, now how do I get rid of it? I don't, like, I don't like the fact that you can come back to us at any time because I could be doing something embarrassing <laughs> while Gabe was talking. I like hangouts because I can put myself on uh, mute and then go do some stupid. You can shit. do that, you right? Can do that. No, I tried, but now Je Jess has control over this shit. He's like God with this technology, and he's like a kid that just discovered he has a wiener and he's playing with it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't bring my wiener into this. Oh my God. That's I, I'm keeping it family friendly. I said wiener, <laughs> and I haven't used that term since probably the third grade. <laughs> Wait, here's a question for Uncanny Omar. Uh oh. Okay. What's up? Have you already pre ordered the bar for Cybertron Unicron? The most expensive Transformer. Yes. Uh, well, the most expensive Transformer uh, released by a, a not third party company. Tell me about this, man. I need to know what this is about. This is the biggest Transformer yet. It is Unicron. He is over four inches taller than Fortress Maximus, the combined war. So this is a war for Cybertron. He is 500... Are you talking about your wiener again? Five, yes, that's what I call him, Unicron. Uh, he is $575. It's mm -hmm. fucking crazy. And it's one of those things. It's kind of like a... It's not like a uh, crowdfund or Kickstarter, but Hasbro is working with another uh, company that's kind of part of Hasbro to uh, put it together. Oh, man. Hey, I'm excited. I'm still on the fence. I know that my weak ass is going to end up buying it. So, I want yeah. it, dude. I saw the picture that, that, that Gio put into the chat, our chat, and dude, that thing is dope. It's two feet tall. 
It's, it's I intense. have the uh, War of Unicron. Is that what they call it? War of Unicrons? The Unicron trilogy, or I have yeah, one of the two the, the, the original ones. The com okay, the Unicron came from Armada. That's there was it. A, there was a prototype originally released um, right after the movie, but it was just too much money to make, and nobody was going to buy it. But man, this legit looks amazing. Like seeing a picture of him next to Combiner Wars uh, Optimus Prime, it's fuck. You're like, oh my god, I need that in my life. So how do you ever give me shit about anything? I have no idea. This is unbelievably nerdy. Shut Dude, up, I'm like nerd. nerd. Oh my god. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about you. You give me shit every day about something. I cannot believe it. Because the shit you talk about is nerdier. Oh, oh there's <laughs> nothing much nerdier, nerdier than in this chat right Bullshit. now. You guys have played with Transformers without getting high and laid, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I believe you get the high part, but the late part? Come on, bro. You're exaggerating. I don't think exaggerating. So. Okay, I'm exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> like, like, there's a there's, a, there's a very large bell curve of stinky fatties at these I, I, I Hey, that's hey, hey. hey. Don't be shaming stinky people. Stinky fatties, Don't bro. be shaming people. Uh, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying. There's a bell curve of you know what you get at these like <laughs> Transformer shows. Everybody needs love. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and everybody gets it. Bot con speaking. It's, it's either you're a stinky fatty or a juggalo, and I don't know what's worse. I don't fucking put Transformers people with juggalos. <laughs> not that I'm shaming those people, by the way. Uh, <laughs> So what I picked up, <laughs> moving on. I did pick up a Transformer while I was at uh, Moscow Comic Con. This is Overlord. Picked them up for ten bucks. Nice. This is Combiner Wars Overlord. But I also picked up some books. Uh, I picked these up. This lot cost me fifty bucks. I got all of Revival except for Volume One because I think there's only four of these, if I'm not mistaken. You are correct, sir. So I got mm -hmm. this and Trillium. And like I said, I've never been a big fan of Lemire's artwork, but I usually enjoy his stories. I got all this lot for fifty bucks. So, oh, and then I picked this up nice. too because. My wife always likes buying uh, – she's a sweetheart. She likes buying uh, people's original work or people that are in Artist Alley. She totally supports that. Um, so I did the same thing this year. I, I got a book called Shot All to Hell. Uh, Nate Olson was there selling it. It's He got it – it's self-published, but it's through done through Inside Comics. So I told him I'd check it out and uh, read it, man, and probably give it a review on my channel. So that's what I picked up. Uh, what about you? What would, would you read? Uh, I've been you reading read anything. Yeah, I've been reading Booster Gold. I've been reading uh, Bittersweet. Oh, no, Bitter Root, which is uh, really good. I'm digging oh, that. So yeah, far. yeah, you've talked about that. Uh, no, the other Latino in the in the group has that was Luis. He oh, talked. Can about you narrow it down? The other Latino. <laughs> the brown one. <laughs> Is it the brown one or the other brown one? Uh the brown one. And I haven't um I haven't finished it yet, so I'm going to. And then I've been reading Booster Gold for our show tomorrow night on Near Me Conditions. Nice. Where you can find me. Um and that's it. What about you, Jess? What kind of dorky shit that you pick up? <laughs> <laughs> Stuff you recommended. Oh, okay. I'm my bad. Carry on then. Like, like a like a two foot tall unicron. Oh fuck you! You're gonna own that. You're gonna display it. I can't wait to have it. It's gonna be amazing. I'll never, in, I'll dude. never transform it ever, ever into a planet. <laughs> I don't, I don't do that. And Thank you, Justin Page, it. for the super chat, and Iron Cardinal for the super chat. By the way, how, oh, super chats up you... on the uh, the screen, eh? Yeah, yeah, just do that, man, and take I me don't... off the full screen. They're I'm not. Um, they don't show up on um, on the Streamyard chat. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, probably... that's just a sec. Let me oh. see. No, that's not. They don't just show up on the StreamYard chat. Let me see. Well, I'm still here by myself. I'm done showing. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I did pick up Screw, but I got him out of the box because this is the red coat Scrooge McDuck. And if everybody Ooh, reads the comics. Box? No, I took no. him out. I opened the shit up. Huh. I'm not like Jess and stack 85 pop figures behind him. <laughs> That's my retirement. 
<laughs> Entertainment uh, Earth exclusive. Yeah, dude, how did you know that? The sticker. To the sticker. Oh, okay. I was like, I'm not a nerd. <laughs> that looks cool. I like that one. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're gonna throw the box away. Or you're gonna store it forever. No, I'm throwing that shit away. Good. I can see the super chats. Now. Whoa, Iron Cardinal dishing out the dosh. Thank you. I can see. If I go to a separate page, I can see uh, the super chats, um, but they don't show up in the the Streamyard thing that I see yeah. right here. This is pretty interesting. Like everybody is watching me react yeah. to what you are saying right now. Okay, there, we there we go. There we go. There we go. I was looking at my phone. Really. Uh, what uh, um, El Denver? What does that mean? I hope Jess doesn't say tiki tor torches. Is that? They you didn't buy tiki torches. Why would I buy tiki torches? Why wouldn't you uh, buy tiki torches? Exactly. <laughs> I once got drunk at a party and had a tiki, tiki torch fight with a friend. <laughs> now that, that is awesome. I'd, I'd like to hear about that. Okay, so the story goes, I was at a party and I got into a fight with a friend with a tiki torch. Okay, good story. Yeah. And I didn't okay. realize it until the next morning because I blacked out and I had burns on my shirt. Oh wow! <laughs> Don't mix a uh, uh, painkillers and Jägermeister, everybody, or do it, whatever, whatever you want to do. But I do. Oh, Jäger. I woke up the next morning with burns on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "What the fuck happened here, guys?" And like, "Oh man, you were out there like you were fucking Donatello with a tiki torch, just spinning that shit around and fucking around with people, and you and your your friend got in a fight with you. It wasn't like a fight fight, but we were just." Jousting, I guess, with these <laughs> lit tiki torches and trying to set each other's clothes on fire <laughs> because you're because I'm an idiot and you do idiot things with your idiot friends and it was awesome. This is true, you do. But like if All I right. had tiki torches at my house and Omar was here, I would totally try to set Omar on fire. With the tiki oh, torches. absolutely, it would happen. We would set our houses on fire. That's how, <laughs> that's how stupid I would get. Yeah, we would do it in front of my 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 shows on omnibus too with all this paper. I I'm I'm drunk and I get competitive and there's fire around. It's never a good idea. <laughs> I don't know why I don't know why Jess lets me stay at his house. <laughs> I limit your bourbon and cranberry. <laughs> You're limited to two a night. All right, my friend. What did you pick up? Let's read? see. I picked up. Let's see. New X-Men Quest for Magic. I thought you already had that. Uh, nope. You, you sure you don't have that? Oh, boy. What format would I have that in? This is why you consult your comic book advisors. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, what Jess. What format would I have this in? I think I have went through this with you five different times. Okay. Is this look. new X-Men the thing that went with look. the Look! Look at look at my screen right now. This is these are the books that you have. God damn it! Whoops! I took him off the stream. Okay, <laughs> you can do that. So if you now own, he's in a different spot. If you own these books, you have that book. The only thing that that adds is X Inferno. So you can, you can. Uh, I guess you can justify by saying I really wanted to read that four issue miniseries called X Inferno. I don't have X Inferno. Which is balls. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you have these, get rid of these. You've just upgraded for some weird reason. This is why you consult your com comic book advisor. <laughs> God damn it. That's okay, man. You, you needed that X and Furnace. Uh, cool. And you I got a new cover. familiar. Soon to come to the Omnibus Collector's Facebook group as a sale post, X and Furnace from Justice <laughs> Collection. I don't have X and Furnace, but I do have. I thought I had those are four books. Those Welcome to Omni Bros Live, where we talk about collected editions, but nobody listens. Wait, are those wait, new X Men? Mm -hmm. uh, it's the Kyle and Yost books that follow up New Mutants. Childhood's End? X Force? Yeah, yes, yes. Childhood End. It's like volumes that what you just picked up is like the equivalent of volumes four and five. Or no, five and X and Furnace, I think. Okay, I don't have X and Furnace. <laughs> it's not like you should throw that book in the furnace. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I there's one reason I got this collection, 
It's one word. FOMO. <laughs> was it going out of print? Yeah, Gabe super baited me on it. And since I got that, I decided I better get this. Hell yeah. That's good stuff, man. You'll like it. No, it's okay. good. Maybe. Good. Uh, actually, he expands on the trial of Gambit a little bit. And, and there's a lot of... Uh, uh, tries to fix it. Uh, like Thieves Guild and Assassin Guild stuff in there, too. That's all really fun stuff. Okay, yeah. good. Okay, I upgraded. Got Monstrous. Nice. Ooh, what, did you go with that? That's the DCBS cover? Right? Uh, if that's not the yes. regular cover. Yeah, it's the yeah. DCBS cover. Yeah, that's yeah, the one that's on sale this week for 75% off. <laughs> You have that already collected in one of those Barbie Quinn albums. Because <laughs> only three people bought them and they were like, oh shit, we need to move these books. Uh, Batman Deluxe number four, which I will be reviewing with Taylor Brown on Batter Days in the Bat Cave. Is this Our just Batman a show? My hall? Jesus. Yeah. That's three um, for three right there, bro. Did you get that at Cable and X Force? I did not. Oh, he will when he goes out of print. Right as soon as um, <clears throat> as soon as Omar says it's a uh, low stock, that's when I'll get it. Gone. It's gone. X Force. Okay. Hey Jess, guess what? <laughs> it's out of print. Okay, then I'm getting it. Ba Lord. Batman Volume Two. Yeah. And... Can't wait for Volume Three. Hasn't even been solicited yet, has it? We know. No, people are really about like, worried about it too. Um, and I think that's it. God damn it. Nice. Freaking new X-Men. Oh, dude, it was only a $40 book. You're fine. $40? Is that what it was? Uh, retail. <laughs> dude, you're like, like, well, that's like nothing for you. That's how much uh, you think a banana, that's how much you think a banana costs. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Uh, what did you, did you read? Any other? Obviously, not new X Men. <laughs> <laughs> you would have been pissed a lot sooner. Yeah, and there's highlighters saying Kristen told you to get that CLZ inventory app. Just she certainly did. I um, have that app. Uh, let's see, Hal Jordan and the Green Lanterns one and two. That's going to be on the Dog and Bone show. Tomorrow, right. Tyler Blunt and I do reviews, and we're going to review these two books tomorrow. Cool. I will is give it, you is a... on your channel? Um, the mm -hmm. Omnidog's Vault. Yeah. Cool. Omnidog and T-Bone, the Dog and Bone Show. Spoiler alert, I loved them. And I didn't even know I was going to love them. That's I the didn't. Uh, look at this little... Van Skyver Nazi signature man. This guy's kind of <laughs> odd. Uh -oh. Wow. Uh -oh. he's, he's, still a, now. he's still a damn good artist, man. Uh, I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying that's a little fascist looking to me. He's uh, always sounded like that. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, you see his, his art book that he did too. Anyway, let's get off that. Let's get off that topic. Okay. Good. West Coast Avengers one. Oh, uh, yeah. just, oh that book sucked. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You, what was it? You suck. <laughs> yes. Hey, wait. I, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but look at this uh, San Diego comic. Nope. We, we can't. Nobody can see it. Oh. Uh, oh, there we go. I don't know if that's coming in clear or not. I can't really Harley see Quinn. that. Oh. So Harley, I'll send it to you in the chat then. Okay. Cool. It's one of those is weird, like, yeah, these are the kind of things that people are going to, I'm probably going to get stabbed trying to get one of these, so. <laughs> and by stabbed, I mean with, with the gla broken glass on my dick. Like, people are crazy about this stuff over there. Worth it. And they they flip them online, too, later. Word. Yep. Uh, anyway. Uh -huh. Where was I? West Coast Avengers. Hilarious, oh, okay. fun. Shut up, Omar. It's great. <laughs> you don't have a clue what you're talking about. It's got a red pool in it. I reviewed awesome. it. I reviewed it on my channel like months ago. I didn't like it. I thought it was you okay. You didn't like it. It was okay. I wish th I wish there was more, but sadly I wasn't the only one that didn't like it because the book got canceled. I know. It's too bad. I loved it. 
West uh, Coast uh, Avengers. Well, that's just that's just the normal curse of, you know, you got a long form story and they let you do four issues and then they cancel it because everybody waits for the trade these days and no one ever Marvel or these these companies don't really wait for the first trade to go out and gather a fan base that way. It's all based mm -hmm. on single issues, for the most part. No, that was word. T Tigra. Who wrote that? Is that Leo? No, that's uh, Kelly Thompson again, right? Yeah, Kelly Thompson. Yeah, God, I'm the worst. I'm just getting hurt. Then, then both of them mixed around in my head. <laughs> then I read. Uh, let's see. I already read Uncanny. Let's see, I, I reread Uncanny. Buncanny one, so I could read Buncanny two. Mm -hmm. And then I reread Extraordinary one, so I could read Extraordinary two. And I love them both. They're very good. And I'm going to stop going back and forth and just go straight through Extraordinary and then go straight through Uncanny because I'm getting confused. Of those, right? I know, but I'm getting confused going back and forth between Extraordinary and then the other oh, one, All yeah. New. Yeah, I can tell you the difference. One sucks, one sucks more, and one sucks the most oh, out of boy. all those flaws. <laughs> Your wow. name shouldn't be Uncanny Omar. It should be The Buzzkill. <laughs> Captain Buzzkill. It's Captain Smart Comics. <laughs> Captain Buzzkill. <laughs> oh, man, I think it's great that you love those stories, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, I like my life. Quit uh, being such a... Uh, How have you been kill. reading comics so long and not been jaded? Man, you're such a good guy. What are you... <laughs> like, I've been to your house, so I know you don't keep dead bodies around. There's got to be some dark side to you. <laughs> yeah, you. You're my dark side. Oh. Okay, let's not get racist. He keeps a bunch of Omar's in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> let's not get racist. <laughs> racist. Stop it. Uh, good haul. Good, good reads. No, I'm glad you're enjoying this. Thank Shit. You. <laughs> now... Remember, they, Omar's opinion is the only one that matters on X Men comics. If 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 they announce an omnibus, I'll fucking buy it. You bet your ass, I'll buy it. But you know, now wait a minute. This says X Men and Furnace one through four and Saga. What's Saga? That's that Brian K Vaughn book. Don't confuse <laughs> It's and like a it's a recap of the like Inferno Saga. And they, material from X Men Unlimited number fourteen and X Men Divided We Stand number two, which you already have that stuff. I mean, make that up. <laughs> you could justify it. Are you trying to just it? hold on to that one issue that that might not be in the but other collection? Honestly, as a reason to keep it. Honestly, as somebody that likes magic that much, I'm surprised you don't have the X and Furnace oversized hardcover. I know that's um, has the David Finch failing. art. David it's Finch a, uh, it's a cover. failing of mine. We'll fix that. I'm sure it's somewhere in a quarter bin or 50 cent what, bin. The hardcover? Yeah. It didn't sell that well. Um, all right. What are we going to talk about tonight? What's coming out? Are we still talking about that? What's coming out? Did we figure before, out how to share a screen? Yeah. We before we do out. the previews, there's a bunch of questions that need answering. Let's do questions. All right. Q&A. What do we got? Oh, We're we not doing previews? Format. We will. Oh. Or do you want to do that afterwards? I mean, Gio, Gio's talking about questions, so I don't know. Sorry. Oh, uh, Divine, no, I am not picking up that Spider-Man and MJ Campbell. What? I can't, see, I can't see the question. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Jess. <laughs> this is Jess. so cool. I mean, that's so badass. Look, Look at that guy's icon. That thing is dope. Oh, I yeah. Am, I like I've, that little avatar. I liked it, too, but I uh, have no more room for statues. Peace and love, peace and love. I have no more room for statues, so I am not picking that makes... up that statue, even though I think it's beautiful. Um, uh, I cannot pick it up. He's got to make room for the War for Cybertron, Unicron. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you get rid of some of those bombshells. Yeah. How dare you? Those, no. bit, those are a little outdated now. How dare no, you? Not. Yeah. I'll defend, I'll defend Jess. They need to stay there. God, no. <laughs> stay away. <laughs> what, was the, what was the other questions, Gio? Um, oh, what the hell just happened? Let's see. Hold on. They're asking, uh, what makes Omar so sad? Uh, I come from a third world country. 
I uh, I was bullied a lot as a kid, and my escape was comic books. I've been through therapy for like the last fifteen years, and I overcompensate by buying things. All of that is bullshit, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a damn good liar. And no, wait, I do I do come from Peru, even though some people are on the fence about it being third world or not. But where I was, it was definitely fucking third world. That's why you moved away when you were like six months old. Uh, no, I was eight, eight years old, I think. Eight, eight years, years old. Like, no, it's a little different. I can't remember. Okay. It, anything else? Uh, no. Let's do previews. All right. We'll get to the questions later. Gabe, you want to uh, do the honors? Yeah, I just, I just mix something up. So let's see how this works. All right. Yeah, sorry. Screen share. My entire screen. Um, and previews. How's this look? We good? Nope. Does it nope. not work? Just nope. being you. Jess has to. Jess has to approve it. Oh yeah, that's right. I have to yeah, approve yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. I did last time. How do I do that? What? What do you How mean do approve it? <laughs> what do you mean approve it? Is um, there, yeah. like, there has to be I'm, a, in, I'm in the waiting room again. The, the, the screen sharing's in the waiting room thing again. Yeah, you, the, look at the waiting room area and see if you can click on the screen share or an option that allows the. Okay. Let's see. Uh, so let me know when you guys see previews. Okay, I wait. Uh, Ooh. I think maybe something. Yep, we got it. Holy shit, that's confusing. <laughs> can anyone see this? <laughs> um, yeah, we can. Okay. Wait, what's wrong? Is something wrong? Because I got somehow my windows uh, got split or my panels got my uh tab. Okay, this is my screen, so yeah, this is the problem. Good. Yeah, okay. Hey. How, how did you feel last time, Jess? I don't think we've ever done it. You did it like 20 seconds ago, or like 10 minutes into the show, I should say. Shared your screen? No, I just, I just uh, isolated your screen. We haven't shared, we haven't shared previews yet. We ha we haven't done share screen. Are you sure? Because I swore we were doing it. No, no, you, you tried the doing the, sh you tried sharing it, but it didn't work at the start of the show. I think I can only share my screen from this setup. No, because we're all no. given the option to share yeah. screen. Exactly. There has to, like if I go to share screen right now, hold on, let's see what happens. Share my screen. Share. What, what happened to? Oh, you, you got him out. You, you okay. took him out of the. You what? you booted. <laughs> you How did booted I boot him? <laughs> I didn't touch he, him. He should be in the waiting room. What waiting room? Because uh, down below, um, there's like a bin or a panel yeah he's not there anymore what oh, well he maybe must he have left he must have left okay so do you guys have share screen on your thing there's yeah the so look i'm i'm sharing my screen right now it says share right mm -hmm. it says you're in the show everyone can see and hear you so let me just i don't know uh go okay. to uh, okay how about that go to what the font Yep, we can see it. And so this is when I do my custom books. This is where I go to type my fonts. We're sharing it. Oh, you guys can see this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I figured it oh. out. See ya. Okay. I'm, I'm Captain Smart Comics. <laughs> okay. Let's not jerk each other off here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> the hell is the, what's the name of the things? Previews World? Previews. Yeah. yeah. There it is. All right, previous world. Where do I go? New releases. New releases. New, new this week, or just new releases? Okay, new, but this isn't just gonna show comic books too. And then select category and pick um, graphic thingamajigs. There okay. Uh, die, die, die by Robert Kirkman, Volume One comes out this week. Issues one through eight. Boy, they don't believe in that nine ninety nine trial shit again, do they? It's 1999. <laughs> Gunning for hits. Trade paperback. Vindication. 
trade paperback, image comics. You guys can see my screen, right? I don't see anything, by the way, so I just assume. Yeah, that. I, I got yeah. it so that it's the entire screen. All yeah, right. I'm seeing it. Gabe, you're, you're here. Uh, mm-hmm. Add to stream. Yeah, you're there here. There you go. Hey, hey I'm back. Okay, you're back, <laughs> but now I'm... Okay, yeah, sorry. Right, that's fine. No, it's all good. Uh, BPRD, the <laughs> devil you know. <laughs> sorry. Trade paperback, <laughs> volume three. <laughs> That BPRD book is the last one, by the way. From, die, die, uh, die is 50% off, by the way. Nice. Uh, okay. BPRD is the last one, the devil you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that ends the uh, current BPRD stuff. Uh, then we have Creepy Archives, which I did a first look at on my channel, if you want to check that out. Disney's Dracula starring Mickey Mouse, trade paperback. LaGuardia, trade paperback. Or La Guardia, trade paperback. Oh, wow. Yeah. Usagi Yojimbo limited edition hardcovers. So the, the limited edition hardcovers come out like a week or two before the trades. I assume this is one of the last ones too because they're going over to IDW, right? Yeah, it already started publishing at IDW. Sad, sad. End of an era, man. Witcher Volume 4. Then we have from IDW, speaking of IDW, Bram Stoker's mm-hmm. Dracula trade paperback for better or worse, complete library hardcovers. That's a just book, I think. Godzilla King. What? You get for better or worse, right? <laughs> uh, I used to love that comic strip. Yeah, see? That's a just book. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Go- Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters. Yes, uh, please. Awesome. Rip Kirby, not rest in peace, Kirby. Uh, volume 11, 1973 to 1975, Sons of Chaos, hardcover. They called us enemy. Treasures treasures retold. The lost. Real, real quick, Omar. Yep. Usually, usually I do this and I, I, there's, I usually pick out one or two things I was really interested in. Mm-hmm. They call us enemy. Like that is, click on that. This is, I didn't know about this until a couple of days ago. Somebody oh, in the this store is a asked George us about this. Decay book. Yeah, this is oh, George cool. Takei's uh, experience being in a Japanese internment camp when he was a little Ooh. boy during World War II. I didn't know they made it into a graphic novel. That's kind of sad. I mean, sad that it happened, but uh, was it a book first and then they turned it into a graphic novel? I have no idea. I just heard about this like two days ago. Does anybody now, in the dope. chat know that reads books without pictures? Because I, I don't. I haven't done that in years. Wait, what uh, was I don't even the Black Matter of Watchmen. The Dracula book? It was just Bram Stoker's yeah. Dracula. Oh, because oh, Two Moon Dracula is 50% Dracula. off. I just want to make sure I get that. That's a redo of the uh, that's old school the, Michael Noya uh, work, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, then we have Green Arrow, mm-hmm. Volume 7, mm-hmm. Justice League, Hawk World, Volume 3. I'm waiting for the hardcovers. Sandman again. Justice Wonder League, Hawk World is 50% off. Pardon me. My right. bad. I love this cover, by the way. This art germ cover. It's mm-hmm. gorgeous. Beautiful. It really is. And now we'll move on to the Marvel, Marvel Comics. Black Widow, No Restraints. Uh, I think Maddie was going to review that. Uh, Havoc and Wolverine Meltdown. Uh, Eyes of the Camera, Miles Morales, Trey Paperback 1, Thanos. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Miles Morales and Thanos are 50% off. Thanos? (laughs) (laughs) My man. Both of those are 50% off. This is a great book. I did an overview on my channel. It's beautifully done. According that, to L. Denver, the uh, they call us enemy was originally a, was a play. Oh, mm. okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, Tomb of Dracula, Day of Blood, Night of Redemption. Wolverine, it is the fifty percent off. Wolverine, the Long Night. This is uh, based the, uh, on the podcast. podcast, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. This. I did a first look on my channel on this, but I'm going to push it again in case you don't watch it. Uh, this is something you need if you have the omnibuses because this is stuff that has never been collected anywhere else except the Marvel Masterworks Volume 7 and 8 of X-Men. This is pretty much the stuff while X-Men was being reprinted between um, the years right before uh, Giant Size X-Men. So for three or Are four you years... Are sure I don't have it in five or six trades already? I'm sure you don't have it. But there's no X-Men titles in this book, Omar. 
I know, but this is where you find out like why Beast becomes this blue hairy beast, mm -hmm. and what the X Men were doing teaming up with the Defenders and Avengers and stuff like that. So it's a I I highly recommend it because it's one of those for completist. And unfortunately, I think that Giant Size Fantastic Four is the first appearance of Jamie Madrox too, which is cool. Right, you got the first appearance of Wolverine. You have all these things that kind of lead up to Giant Size One. Mm. But anyway. Destiny Buy it. Four, number four. And um, first, Jamie Madrox, who legitimately is the uh, the Thanos one is uh, oversized hardcover, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wait, are we calling it Thanos as a joke? Or is that, uh... <laughs> no. Yeah, his name is Thanos. <laughs> it's because it's a joke. <laughs> Shut up. His name is Thanos. <laughs> X-Men Milestones, Fall of the Mutants. This is the second milestone line. Um, I believe the next one is Inferno. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I don't speak for Marvel, but if I was going to make another box set based on the greatest X-Men stories ever told, I would keep an eye out on the milestone line. Okay. What are they doing now? Trial of Gambit? I would... I said greatest stories. I know. That's why I said that. Get out. <laughs> Just kick him out. Okay. We can't. We can only talk about the Carl Gambit once a year. Bags of a, or a story there of original graphic novel. What is this? Boom Studio. Oh. By, by Night. Trade Paperback Volume mm -hmm. 2. Empty Man. Ronan Island Volume 1. I, Ronan no Island was awesome. I, I can't believe there's already a trade out for that. Let's look at Ronan Island by Boom Studios. That's a really Greg, cool book. Greg Pack, digging that cover. Nice. Speaks, mon speaks manga to me and Geo. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard a lot of good things about this book right here, Geo. Yeah, yep. Have you? Oh, See, I this is what happened when let Omar do this. Well, what? I, you signed <laughs> off like right when it was your turn. Yeah. <laughs> what? I educate people on books they may not have heard of? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about some more weird manga. Beast Stars, books. Beast Stars is getting a lot of hype. It's a signature size book, so it's taller than a regular manga. And it's basically like a darker Zootopia type book. You had me at darker. All right. Yeah, it's, it's very so European. It's, it's now animals and tentacle porn. <laughs> He shot up. <laughs> dead, uh, dead demons. Da, 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 day, day, destruction. Okay, this is why fucking Gabe makes fun of manga. <laughs> yeah, that's title, title. Title. titles like that. Like Bo, 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 Right, that that manga. Uh, let's see what else is here. Let's make ramen. Actually, I think I'm gonna get that for my wife. No, I want ramen. Yeah, yeah, you do. I'm gonna oh, go back he to that knows the place. best ramen place. Yep. Japan? No, it is great in Nevada, right in Las Vegas. So good. And he, uh, he poured it, it, so much hot stuff on it, his whole head sweats. Yeah, it can't, well, it I'm can't get better to, than getting drunk in downtown Tokyo at 1130 at night and having some guy, old dude off a cart, sell you some ramen. Uh, no, I, I put a lot of hot sauce on my food, and I I sweat. I and I'm bald, so I beat up like I'm on a chain gang. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen <laughs> it. It's true. Filter yourself. All right, let's see what else have we got. Uh, I think that's it, guys. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Okay. See what happens here. Woo! We're back. Yo, we're, back we're all back. Is the brain Did it awesome. Did See, it. it worked. This is dope. I like this idea. I like this whole new format. We'll get the hang of it. All right. I like that. <laughs> I like that throughout the episode. Moved oh, around. Make here. havoc, bro. You got. Yeah. And How is that happening? I think Jess is doing that on purpose. Doing what? <laughs> Moving me around. Omar started at top. Remember, then, I was at the top, pointing at that. Now I'm yeah. like down here jerking Geo off. Sorry, that's oh, a little God. high. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this what happened. I put a bunch of immature brats together. Sorry, and Jim. demonetized. <laughs> and desponsorized. Yeah. Do we do this for the money? But at least we're oh, getting oh, yes, off we Omar. Do. We do. I have soft hands, I've been told. 
<laughs> never know what I'm going to say. Sorry. No, you don't. <laughs> I love it. Bless you guys. I'm going to get oh, some <laughs> All right. Is there anything else? Anybody left in the chat? First of all, after that, we got we got questions. We we can do a couple more questions. We got about ninety people in the chat right now. My hands old... are right here. Don't start with me, G Scott. My hands are right here. <laughs> all right. Uh, what are some of the questions you want to pop right. them up there, Gio? You, I can't. Come... I can't do that. But Jess, if you can highlight Freddie's question, that's a good um... one. Where let's see, where is it? Scroll up a few. The Shadow Roads one. Yeah. Who is that to? Anybody. Uh, I'll just highlight me because I'm the handsomest. Yeah. All right, Jess, you're also the smartest. Debatable. You have read all of <laughs> sixty-one. Can you just can Freddie just jump in? Mm -hmm. I like how we have just, just reading the, the, the <laughs> I don't know. silently to himself. He, he's on Wikipedia right now. Can I read Shadow? <laughs> <laughs> don't get this if you have new X Men already. I know that. <laughs> so real quick, my understanding of of Shadow Road is, is kind of a, a sister comic to the Six Gun. I don't don't take my word for this, but from my understanding, you can go ahead and jump in and read it. Um, you don't need to know everything that happened in Six Gun to understand Shadow Road, but it's just one of those things where you might get some, you know, Easter eggs or hidden information, things like that. So I, you can go ahead and jump in. But I do 1,000% recommend buy, uh, buying and reading or reading. However, getting Six Gun one way or the other, that book is incredible. Um, but yeah, so there you go. You could, I, pretty sure you could jump in and read it and enjoy it, but you should read Six Gun just because it's awesome. Cool. Okay. Good, good answer. Uh, that was Omar, my non-committal there's a, answer. There's a question for Omar too, from Highlighter. Highlighter. You should just have Geo running the show. This is true. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. All right. Did the fight back our white oppressors. What do we got, Omar? Any idea what average print run of an epic? Oh God. Uh. I, no. No, I don't. Okay, oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, that information is never really released. I don't like. I don't they tell you how much they sell, but we never know like the print run of them. I'm sure a volume. Well, like, I really, I honestly, I don't know. I would say, logically, what a volume one has a lot more than a volume twenty. But then, in the case of like Spider-Man Venom, there's, I mean, there's no way that they didn't print more Venoms than they did like a volume three. And that was volume and, twenty. And they don't even tell you how much they they sell. They just Diamond tells you how much they distributed. On, I want to say less than a thousand at points. I don't know, but I really don't know the numbers honestly. All I know is that it costs yeah, them an arm uh, and a leg, and it's a love project. That's for sure. More than three and less than a million. Uh, Pretty good odds. Who? Ridge Jackson has a question. Ridge. Um, mm -hmm. No. Make Havoc's got a great question for Omar. Put that on the screen. You need oh, yeah. to read Ridge's no. No, you don't need to. Not at all. I agree. Mm -hmm. But it's good. I like you can read it, yeah. Thanos. Right. But it's it's not necessary. But it yeah, is good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, they never released Lemire's run on oversized hardcover format. So, uh, let's see. And who um, make, make havoc? Make boy, havoc. Make havoc. I'm going to hang out with that boy. Hit me up, son. Steve, hit me. The up. question for Omar. Yeah. <laughs> and I swear, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Take things out of context, assholes. I never cry. <laughs> Not after sex. Uh, okay. I'm sure between you and Gabe, you all can pick me up some Scotty Young pins. 
Mm-hmm. See what we can do. Yeah, I just picked up some books to get signed. I'm taking my uh, Hickman Fantastic Four omnibus in with me. Is he going to be there, Hickman? Yes. No, I just brought him just because I like to Dude, do you remember when we were in C2E2? Nobody knew he was going to be there. He's just sitting there by himself. Yeah, he, his table was just a, a table. He didn't have he like was a, a like sign he, or anything. He, he wrote his name on a little piece of paper. It's like Jonathan Hickman. And I'm like, that dude looks like a homeless guy. And I remember me and Maddie were like, is that Jonathan Hickman? And Fariha was like, I don't. No, it doesn't look like him because he's like, he has a he has hair made sign that says Jonathan Hickman. But well, he, he, had grown, he had grown his hair out and he lost <laughs> a lot of weight, too. Last time I met that guy, he was he was he was pretty fat. So we were over there. We're like, are you Jonathan Hickman for sure? I can't remember what I said. I was like, answer me these three questions then. <laughs> wow. Because like literally the dude was like no one was sitting like waiting in line at his table because I, I think there were a lot of groups of people like us like. Is that Jonathan Hickman? No, nobody's over there. And it was, or I had some homeless guy just sign my book for me that I had to buy from Gabe because I didn't have anything for him to sign because we didn't know he was going to be there. What book did you get? That Shield, the first one, Volume One, okay. Architects of Forever, whatever the hell it was called. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. It is awesome. Yes, it is worth the buy. Fabulous story, fabulous mm-hmm. art, fantastic book. Everybody loves it that's read it. Universal yeah. praise. It's great. It's a lovely book. Uh, if you like a fantasy adventure and like uh, cool creatures and stuff and manga esque uh, comic books, then yeah, pick it up. Monstrous. Mm-hmm. What else? Uh, we got another question from the collector. I think you guys can answer that one. Uh, the day tripper one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't answer it. What's Let's the question see. about the day tripper? Oh. Uh, I didn't see it's the question it. Question we get, we get, we get pretty often. I Isn't didn't it see coming it. out in April 2020? Yeah, yeah, it's coming out next year. So the question is, uh, is the Day Tripper Absolute still coming out this month? Um, I think Doug mm-hmm. Collector, you're still looking at. I mean, it might not be your fault. Don't don't think I'm, you know, punishing you or accusing you of anything. I think uh, there is still out of date. Uh, solicits out there, and that might be what you're looking at, because I'm looking it up right now, but I think it's sometime next year, early next year, that it comes out. April 7th, 2020. There on Amazon. Go. Absolute day tripper. So April 1st. And supposedly and on IST, it will be April 1st. Mm-hmm. Not the best day for that book to come out. <laughs> yeah. As long as they don't cancel it. Timely's greatest omnibuses are Captain America, Simon and Schuster, and then the Human Torch book. Those are the three that we know for sure. Here's a good question. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I think all of us can answer that, right? We've all read Wade and uh, De- uh, Bendis' run. I think De- Wade... Something happens at the end of Bendis' run that Wade instantly... Uh, I don't want to say tries to fix, but he, he he acknowledges and he continues that storyline. I can't say who it's about or what happened, but... I almost want to say recap would be nice. Like, oh, I'm thinking of Brubaker. Never mind. <laughs> I, I think and, you could read. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you could totally. Run. Okay, yeah, Wade. You could totally read that run without having re- read any uh, Bendis or Brubaker or Miller or Dick uh, in general. Or who was the guy Diggle? Right, right before uh, Wade. Yeah, you don't need to read any of that stuff. It's you a, don't it's want to a, read Diggles anyways because Shadowland sucks. <laughs> this run gets a lot of hate, but 
Uh, it was great until Shadowrun or Shadowland. But Wade's run is just a lot of fun. I really enjoyed his take on Daredevil. Yeah, uh, Wade's run on Daredevil is a complete different tonal change from the book mm -hmm. from when Brew Baker, Bendis, Miller that had you know been part of Daredevil for like thirty plus years up until the point where Wade takes over and becomes more of a fun esque swashbuckling uh, story. There's a really cool crossover, um, the Omega Drive with Punisher. That was really great. He was writing that at the time, wasn't he? Yeah. The Punisher book? Or was that Rucka? No, I think Rucka was writing Punisher at the time. Okay. But yeah, uh, Wade stuff is, it, there's no, really no prerequisite to read that. I think you should just grab it and read it and you'll enjoy it. It's great stuff. And the art by uh, Marcos Martin is great. And then Chris Samney takes over and it becomes even better. Which is really hard because I really hard to say because I I've, I've totally fell in love with Marcos Martin style. Um, who was the other guy that was doing it with Marcos Martin? Because they were switching up issues. Does it say on there? I don't know, but yeah, but the art in it's really really great. Are you highlighting me? I was still listening to Gabe. I know. Sorry, I thought Gabe was done. <laughs> he was still talking. <laughs> I know. Sorry. Um, I I answered a question earlier that it's uh. Human Torch and then the Captain America. Oh, okay. It's okay. You got another one from uh, Clarence for the whole panel. Okay. Do, do, do. Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, do you believe that vertical octopuses will go out of print soon? <coughs> I don't. I mean, I guess it depends on what they are, but I don't see Sandman ever really going out. I, I, think, I think people. I'm sorry, Gio, go for it. I'll, I'll talk when you're done. But uh, I was just going to say that we'll see them go out of print with the old logo, and they'll eventually get reprinted with the new, with the black label stuff. That's what I think they'll do. No, I agree. I think. The, the idea of <laughs> Vertigo being canceled is really uh, people are taking that maybe too literal, and, and and all it is is just a a sub publishing outlet that DC had put up so they could do more mature titles. I mean, DC is not going to let Sandman, especially now that Netflix has a, a TV series come out, disappear into ether and never be reprinted again. But how or, does that work? Um, okay. Let, let, let's. This is a whole different topic, because uh, I've I've always wondered this. Um, Karen left a few. Well, she was asked to leave a few years ago, so I'm surprised it lasted this long. But there is the whole Sandman issue, right? Like, does Sandman truly belong to DC? Because anytime DC. they have to use the character, though, they have to get permission from Neil Gaiman. To use Sandman and Death in their comics. So I remember that was a big deal uh, during what was it? Uh, Action Comics by oh damn it, was it Greg Pak? Well, whoever uh, Straczynski's run the for, uh, Grounded series. Uh, one of those series like where mm -hmm. where Death showed up. It was a big or or when Daniel showed up in JSA. Like it was a big hoorah that those characters showed up outside of. Uh, the DC Vertigo lines because they had to get like permission from Neil Gaiman to use them. So it's from, a really from weird... my understanding. My understanding is it's slightly what you're saying, Omar. But I think what it what, from what I've been told and from my understanding of it mm -hmm. is they can't write part of their, their unwritten agreement, or maybe it's written in stone or in a contract somewhere. But whatever. But the agreement is nobody but Neil Gaiman can write Sandman. The title, like they can't do Sandman number, what seventy six or, or sixty one or whatever the last issue was. They can't continue on with Sandman, the title, without Neil Gaiman. But the characters are still owned as a work for hire uh, contract by DC. That's why they they pop up here and there, here and there, all over the place. But you can't do a Sandman like Sandman Overture that came out. That had to be through through Neil Gaiman. 
Mm. You can't continue his story or do anything with his Sandman story without his permission and or involvement. But the characters are still owned by DC and they can pop up in any Batman book they want. <laughs> uh oh, what happened? I just read Matthew's question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if yeah. we're done, we can talk about Matthew's question. But either way, <laughs> the whole idea game. of I'm sorry. The whole idea of, of vertical like being discontinued <laughs> is, is, is gonna have zero effect, I think, on the publishing of those omnibuses uh, or absolutes. Mm -hmm. They're still being published I by by DC. I, I completely agree with Gabe. As a matter of fact, I still think we'll see the vertigo on the spines for at least another year because I'm sure it's going to cost them a little more money to put a new little printing on there and call it the black label. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I have a funny fucking similar story to what Jess did. I was drunk a couple of Fridays ago, and the only one here is going to be proud of me is Geo. I haven't okay. ordered anime in like two or three years. <gasps> and I got drunk with a group of my friends and I fucking got lit. And I bought a bunch of the, uh, what, who was having to sell right stuff and Sentai? Mm -hmm. They were having to sell. Oh my yeah. God, dude. My wife's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna Cause I even forgot I made the fucking order. Cause I'm looking at my phone. I'm like, why is Sentai and Right Stuff selling, like sending me order confirmation or order updates? I didn't order shit from them in like two or three. Oh my god! <laughs> and I and I use my backup credit card. Jess knows what I mean by that. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> it's the one that doesn't exist, right? Son of a bitch. So I told <laughs> Maddie was like, you got to make a video. And I'm like, yeah, it'll be my last one. I got <laughs> drunk and I ordered a shit ton of anime. So what, what, <laughs> what did you pick up? What did you end up uh, getting? Oh, I don't know. I kind of want to be surprised. When <laughs> He's going to find out when it's in the mail when he gets it. He's like, oh, man. Look at all the hentai. Look at all the stupid shit I wow, bought. I got, never five, watch. I got five copies of Bible Black. <laughs> oh, dude, it was bad. It's so fucking bad. Like, all right, so you can do a mystery haul. <laughs> I mean, I got an idea of what I like, but oh my god, what the fuck's wrong with me? Can't go back into your account and look at what you bought. Or you just oh yeah, I can. I just didn't want to because when I saw the total of one place, I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with me?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't wait for that haul. That's awesome. That is Thank awesome. You. Anyway, thanks for the question, Clarence. That was a good question. That was a good question. There's another one on there that we could probably debate on. I don't know. I think we might all be in agreement. Um, is it is it divine again? What was the question? Same man, uh, absolute. Sandman, yeah, yeah. Throw that up. Let's talk about that real quick if we want. Absolutes. We have all the way. I like. I love omnis. I like big thick omnis, but. <clears throat> and uh, death is getting a reprint in January, so you don't yeah. have to worry about that. I think Overture is getting something going on too. Yeah, so I agree with Omar. I think I think most of us might be in the same agreement that absolutes are the way to go. If you I have it in story, If you've read the story and you love the absolute format, get the absolute format because it is pricey. You're going to end up buying like six absolutes total. If you, if you just want to read the story in huge chunky books, get the omnibus. So it depends on how much you're willing to spend. <laughs> I have the omnis. I think if you haven't read Sandman, don't buy five hundred dollar omnibuses or absolutes. Get the trade and try it out for it. It is mm -hmm. a dense, dense read for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, I when I, I haven't read all of it. I read a few of the uh, the trades, and just for me, I have to. And for more, a lot of people, you kind of have to read that. Like, you have to give yourself time to read it. Like, you can't have the TV on. You can't be dealing with kids. You can't. Have your phone on. Yeah, right. Any of that kind it, of it, really it really deserves your attention for sure. Yeah, but again, well, it, it, if you don't like it, you're not gonna don't 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 jump in head head first in five hundred dollars worth of books if you're not gonna absolutely love that book. It'd be like somebody buying all of a uh, uh, Nightfall based on just me saying I love it. That you're gonna have to absolutely <laughs> love it yourself before you buy it. It'd be like some asshole getting drunk and buying like I don't know a thousand dollars worth of fucking anime based on what everybody $1, else $1, is telling them to go buy. No, it wasn't that bad, but it was bad. Uh, we got a super chat. I can't even spend thousand dollars on anime. <laughs> just to pay Joe Mars next beer. 
<laughs> wow, a dollar ninety nine. That's a PBR not, right there, son. I was like, I'm not that high bar. society. <laughs> That'll get you a nice, like, you know, probably like a, a good six pack of like Natty Ice or something, bro. I'll, I'll get drunk and make my episode. That's a horrible idea. <laughs> uh, that way I can apologize and start crying. God damn it, Tyler so Clark. Clark Nato has a question. Clark Nato's got, he, he's just baiting us on this one. Yeah, that's, that's a little controversial. What's the question? We'll throw it up. Jess. Throw it up, Jess. I got time for one more question. Wow, 6.30 already? Jesus. <laughs> yeah, for you, which series then need absolutes? Preacher <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> That's so... What? Oh, He's just being a I, I hate questions like that. You just That's not a real them. question. Oh, man. I love Derek Robertson's yeah. artwork and Steve Dillon's. They both deserve it. It's not fair. Transmet absolutely deserved the the omnibus treatment or the absolute treatment. It was completely overlooked for years and years. All I got was really crappy trade paperbacks for the longest, longest time. But I'm surprised that it went to it it jumped from trades. It it got like crappy trades that were like three issues, and then it got to like slightly bigger, nicer trades, and then it jumped to absolute. I'm I'm hoping it's what they do with Hitman, honestly. Or give me one big omnibus. I, that, that does have a like spark up a question though. What absolute didn't or what book didn't deserve an absolute treatment? Oh, that's easy. I got you. Why right the now. last man? Wildcats. No, I'm just kidding. You motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he knows I bought that damn book day one. I love Jim. Uh, no, I mean as much as I love this run and and the artist and the writers of it, uh, Superman, Batman could have gone without an absolute. I think that's a good contender. What about what did you say, Jess? New Why Frontier? the last man? I what? Yeah. I completely agree with you. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> I go. wanted to argue with you. Damn it! I got that was one mine one. too. I got that was mine one. too. Here's one for you, bud. I know that you're going to agree and probably for once want to kiss me on this one. Okay. Nope. Uh, Identity crisis. Oh, yes, yeah. that's the one. Ding, ding, totally. ding. You win. You win. Totally. I I have blocked that damn book out of my mind so much. I forgot there was an absolute. Yep, you're right. Good, good choice. I, like that's that book, I don't think it deserves an absolute. I mean, an oversized hardcover, sure, but absolute. Like, I, 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 I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Absolutes are my, my favorite format, and I think it's it should be reserved for books deserving of an absolute prestige like mm-hmm. archival kind of treatment most oh, most I'm with you. out there have it yes uh, superman batman and eh, identity crisis uh uh you know at least the art in superman and batman you can argue it's the late michael turner it's yeah. ed mcginnis right yeah but rag morales like did his mom pay for that to get made <laughs> like who no one was asking for oversized Rag Morales artwork. Here's right? another one. I like it, and I think Omar, you like it too. And I, don't, I, I think Jess has been told to read it, but hasn't read it yet. Kevin Smith's Green Arrow. Oh, I read it. For oh, yeah, Omar we read show. it. You read it on my show. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Phil Hester did the artwork on that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. And not Andy a Park. huge Phil Hester fan. Yeah, I can see why. Did you like it, it at all? I, I didn't see that episode. Like. What'd you think of it, Jess? I like the story a lot. Not a huge okay. Phil Hester art fan, but I like the story a lot. See, I was going to go with what Johnny Rando and Mr. Awesome were saying was uh, Superman for tomorrow, but I mean, the saving grace of that was Jim Lee's oversized artwork. I yeah. didn't care for the story at all, but the story the artwork was good. awesome. Oh, yeah, that's another one. That's kind of, yeah. I'm looking at my collection, and for the most part, it's all top notch, top notch stuff. Besides those ones that we mentioned. I'm trying to think of other ones out there I don't have. Yeah, most of the stuff that I have in oversized format, I think it's the stuff that I think deserve to be in oversized format. I mean, some people would argue, I, well, uh, Jess, Jess doesn't like Tim Cell. So he probably doesn't own any of the Batman, Jeff Loeb, Tim Cell books. He does have the omnibus, though. Pain pill. There it is. <laughs> Pain oh, pill by it's still sealed. I, I love it. I wasn't looking <laughs> and I heard the crinkling. I thought that was you shaking up like your, your pillbox or something. <laughs> Do you have a pillbox like that, Jess? It has like each day of the week on it for your pills. Yes. Oh, uh, what a, <laughs> I, before I before we get going, one of the one of the stories I did want to share with you guys that I think everyone here, well, maybe just Geo and Gabe and I. 
would agree with is that I talk I talked to Graham Nolan. Like we were drinking at a bar. It was really nice, man. He's a really cool dude. And if you don't know who he is, he was the artist uh, on Batman for very many years, like up there with the uh, during the time Jim Apparel was drawing Batman. And one of the things I talked about as we were drinking, I was like, dude, you know, I told him about how uh, I'm into collected editions. And I'm like, why didn't you draw the covers for fucking Nightfall Omnis? Like, he, and he said, I was going mm. to. He said the editor approached him and he was like, hey, you're the guy that we want to draw. Because, I mean, Jim Apparel had passed away by that point. And they were like, you, we want you to draw the covers to all three of these omnibuses that were coming out. And then Dan Didio stepped in and said, no, we have a working profe- like we have a working relationship with Kelly Jones. Let's get that guy to do it. <sighs> uh, during that time, there was that whole uh, uh, DC not giving Graham Nolan or Chuck Dixon credit for Bane. Mm. Like during the movie, like using them for the movies and stuff like that. So there was a lawsuit, and I think something something was going on. That's why they did that uh, Batman uh, or Bane Conquest book. Um, it was a pretty interesting I'll conversation. Like, Sorry about that. We'll give you some more work. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was it was in a way to renew the licensing. I don't know, but it was a really interesting conversation. That's the best thing about conventions is just running into like some of your favorite creators. You could actually kind of hang out with them and have a good yeah, or share a yeah. conversation. You so don't I mean, get mo- that with almost mo- any other hobby. Most of the time they're, you know, they're regular human beings. You know, every once in a while you'll run into somebody that's kind of a complete prick. Like, I don't know if you guys ever watch uh what's it called Omni Dog's Vault, but if you guys ever met that guy in <laughs> real life. <laughs> <laughs> Total <laughs> prima donna prick, man. <laughs> it's hard to get a conversation with that guy because he's always popping pills. <laughs> <laughs> and then ordering books that he doesn't need. Nobody needs these damn books. All right, here's a question for Geo from Dave K. You want to pop that up there, Chief? Sure. I got a question. Yeah, man. Oh, that's easy. Aquaman. Um, Aquaman run, I think the new 52 would benefit a whole lot from the absolute treatment, especially Throne of Atlantis. And uh, if we're going to go back, the Sub Diego stuff uh, from uh, uh, Gleason. So either Sub Diego or Throne of Atlantis would be my picks for an Aquaman absolute. Because he what doesn't about, have. What about that gorgeous artwork from. Uh... Dude's name that I can't pronounce. Oh, I know who you're going to talk about. Um, I want to say Kojak, but I think that was a TV show. Yeah, that's a TV show. Uh, are you talking about um, Atlantis Chronicles? No, 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 no. The recent run from Rebirth. What? Uh, uh, Cedric? Oh, uh, Cedric? That's it. Yes, yes. Uh, it. I mean, he only did like four or five issues, so when it makes sense because like they did the deluxe oversized hardcover and it was just a part two of a part three storyline you know a, a three-part storyline so i don't i don't think it would make much sense uh, then again they it's love dc their- geo they've done like four issue absolutes before <laughs> uh, man but i don't know i want um you know that's always like a fuck up the coloring thing. Uh, Omnipool, I don't have any more news so far, or any news that I can talk about yet. Uh, I think everybody is busy right now setting up for s- this little convention called the San Diego Comic Con. So they've been, I think, Dark Horse and, and Marvel, DC, they're all setting up, and they've been planning that for a couple weeks. And they're saving all their announcements for that, too, probably. For oh, absolutely. New pill box for Jess. <laughs> There's another <laughs> super chat. <laughs> Did I'm somebody not complaining, do that? But- yeah, I'm not complaining, but man, thank you, Justin, for hooking us up and everybody else. This is a lot of super chats we got on this. Thank you. So thank you. Guys are the New fucking best. Box. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, Gio and, uh, and Omar, you guys played Left 4 Dead, right? Um, no. Wait. Uh, you never played Left 4 Dead? Which one is that? Is, is that, that the one with the island? No. The, oh, mm. yeah, the city, right? Like you start off in a room with three of your friends. 
Yeah, the whole yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I played it. Thing. Yeah. Every time I think of, of Jess like and his pills, you know that part in the game where you find pills and like pills here. Oh, I think that <laughs> you <all> recover. <laughs> I'm a yeah. When you recover, yeah. I, if, me and Jess don't text like on the phone that often, but if we did, I would totally make that his ringtone. <laughs> like, here. I'm like, oh, that's Jess. What's going on, Jess? What's going on? Yeah, Clark- I did pick up. I did check in at San Diego Comic Con for those those toys. Clark Nato. Uh, I I did tell David that they forgot Spider Man two in the minis. He 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 didn't. He kind of ignored my request. I don't know if he went to go yell at somebody or not. Uh, by the way, uh, Esteban Maroto is the artist that I was going to talk about for Atlantis Chronicles. I think his art would look great and absolute. Oh, the Peter David uh, book, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. That's a good one. Yep. Okay, so there's a there's a a good topical question we could probably get into probably before we head out from uh sean l in the chat okay what do you got oh okay i really wish we we all could like click on questions i yeah well maybe next time jess will figure it all out or just can pay attention to the chat <laughs> i was paying attention to the chat i went right to it well, Jess answered his question earlier when he was like, yeah. I got this gambit because it's, it's going out of print. Just paid attention to the chat when somebody gave him money for a pill box. <laughs> this, this, is, this is a really good question. And it's uh, it's one that I think a lot of people get asked. I know on, on my show, I know on Jess's show. And I always tell people the same thing. It's like, you know, buy what you want. Don't buy because something is out of print. And it, Omar, like, read the question. We have people who listen do you buy oh, what you audio. want now or buy what will go out of print first? I yeah. buy what I want and then I make stupid drunk orders on anime. <laughs> 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 don't drink and buy, guys. Uh, I would say don't go into buying Omnis with the idea that it's a hype hobby that like, oh, it's going to go out of print, so I must buy it. Buy what you like get an experience for uh, buying books, and then you have an understanding of, uh, okay, I'm gonna read this, I'm gonna buy this, even if it's gonna go out of print, I'm gonna, I know that I'm going to enjoy it, so I better get it. Don't go into this thinking like, oh, it's out of print, so I must get it. A lot of books that aren't that great go out of print, and Mm -hmm. you don't need them. So just buy what you like Mm -hmm. and go from there. Your taste will evolve, and you you'll figure it out. You'll find out uh, if you really need it or not, and you will probably make the smart decision. I wanted to touch on this question uh, because it says that he is a new omnibus collector and he's trying to catch up. Uh, don't do that. Don't yeah. don't fall into trying to catch up or have a collection like like we, we do. Um, We've been doing this for a, a stupid, stupid long time uh, before books were really going out of print. Yeah. A lot of us were doing this for. Uh, so same with what Gio and Omar said is buy what you like. And this is just general comic book collecting tips in general. Just buy what you like uh, and stick with that. If something goes out of print, uh, who cares? Because it'll be in another form. It's probably going to get reprinted. Yeah, it's going to get mm-hmm. reprinted eventually for the most part. Most of these books back here that I've got, there's some big whales, but they, they're getting reprinted, like Annihilation and, and things like that. So yeah. it's, it's, just, it's a waiting game. And you don't want to get caught with 40, 50 omnibuses that you haven't read and you really have no intention of reading. Then you have to turn around and try to sell it and possibly have to take a loss on selling it as well. Mm-hmm. So get what you they, like. If they, they go out of print, good for you. Things. Yeah, no, seriously. Um, and you have to know how to ship it. Like, it's not just throwing it in the mail. It's it's. There's a little bit of a uh, experience needed when it comes down to shipping these big, heavy books. So, yeah, I think we're all in agreement here. Just I wanted to I wanted to touch on the catching up part. There's nothing to catch up on. I don't know. I'm if, not sure what that means. If you find a, up, I'm, I'm worried about to get all the omnibuses at once. If you're if you find a series that you really enjoy, though, like if you're like, oh, my God, X-Men is amazing or Spider-Man's amazing, no pun intended. Like, <laughs> I really want I want all the Omnis. I, I do this myself. I have uh, I buy books as placeholders like I buy like I have bone. I'm still waiting to find the perfect bone edition, like hardcover uh, limited edition. But I have the soft cover 
and that I've had that for well over seven years now, uh, waiting to run into because I don't want to pay outrageous prices for the limited edition. Um, I've done that with Essex County because uh, I didn't I missed out on the slipcase. I did that with Strangers in Paradise, and now they're reprinting the hardcover when they said they would never ever reprint the the hardcover Omnis. Uh, but that's only I suggest that like in in case you really enjoy something like in the in the case of X Men or 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 Spider Man, they have that wonderful epic line or trade paperbacks. You know, then you can get on the cheap side if you want to continue reading the story and use them as placeholders to eventually wait for a reprint or wait until you find because sometimes finding these out in the wild is so fun when you're like, holy shit, is that really X Men Inferno? And then it's not that fun when they announce a x-men inferno reprint right and x-men omnibus inferno so mm-hmm. not that one is coming i'm just saying that it, it kind of takes that fun away jess any any other suggestions don't no i think you guys hit it exactly don't pop pills and in, in order <laughs> deadpool <laughs> by daniel way omnibus <laughs> we got another we got another super chat by the way wow okay <laughs> this is super chat city what's this one for Man, this is gonna pay for our uh, our, our twenty dollar monthly uh, streamyard streamyard service. Twenty bucks? <laughs> what the shit? Will there be an Omnib- Omnibros lanyard from NFL dude? Lanyard? <laughs> Are those those things you wear around your neck? Yeah. Right at conventions. Yeah, who can make that, Jess? You're like an Etsy kind of guy. <laughs> Etsy. <laughs> you, you know, I wonder. I wonder if our t- if, if well, we have a Teespring uh, store. If anybody wants to buy T-shirts, uh, especially uh, the Omar influenced Raw Shark T-shirt. <laughs> what um, the hell? So I wonder if they have lanyards on there too. They do lanyards. Oh no, I have to take a look into. It. I haven't. I haven't touched our Teespring in a while. All right, gentlemen, I gotta bounce out of here. I've had a lot of fun, but it's time for me to go. You guys can continue this though. And I keep think answering I'm out. Questions. This is almost a two-hour show. This is awesome, but I, I do got to finish getting ready for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Jess. Plug where time. can they find you, Uncanny Omar? You can find me on my channel, Near Mint Condition. We're doing a live show tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, talking okay. about Booster Gold. New be on the lookout for Omni Burrows live action figures, where Omar has a kung fu grip. <laughs> It's and my that's, dick. That's, tick, that's tick, call it the dick punching. <laughs> no, I was gonna say that was a reference to the Sublime song, "Caress Me Down." And ah, Geo, that song all about getting handsies. Where can they oh, find you? Sorry. You over there? Yeah, uh, there you go. Well, you can find me uh, at <laughs> Weekend Geekdom on YouTube, where I talk about anime, manga, comics, and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, yeah, a week in Geekdom. Okay, and Gabe. Where can they find you in San Diego? Yeah, you'll be able to find me in at San Diego Comic Con this week. I'll be there Tuesday till Sunday. Uh, find me at the nice. Torpedo Comics booth, booth 1000. That's our vintage booth. Um, shit. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. We have a trade paperback booth as well that is starts off at 50% off. I'm trying to check that I look this up I spent uh, so much is, money there <laughs> uh, yeah 817 817 is our trade paperback booth it starts at 50 percent off and the discounts get bigger the more you buy when you hit 10 books it becomes 80 percent that's insane off. oh and, and you will find 10 there. books man yeah, yeah you'll find uh, there, there's some there's I'll tell you right now because I, I packed it up if you're if you're looking for Ultimate Spider-Man Volume Ten hardcover. I know I put about two or three in one of the units, so you could find that there for up to eighty percent off. Nice. And Justin Page is the man. Another super chat. Ooh. Thanks, guys. Yeah, but man, thanks. Like, awesome. Thank you. We appreciate this a lot. This is super cool. Thank you, Justin. Uh, I'm gonna start taking my shirt off. This is almost like stripper money. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, quick, five bucks to. Have him keep his shirt on. Mm. Um, and you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault on YouTube and Omnidog's underscore Vault on Instagram. And thank you to IST for being our sponsor. And 
Thank you to the chat and thank you to our viewers. The chat was on fire tonight. Mm -hmm. On vicious fire. And so I say to you, as usual, peace and love, peace and love. And thank you all very much. Good night, everybody. ETL, uh, I'm right ahead of you. I already got some suntan lotion for my bald head. I don't wear regular lotion. I wear suntan lotion, like, all year round.